Hello, my name is Adam Frederick, County Commissioner here in Medina County, and welcome to your Medina County. One of the best parts of my job is that not only do I continue to learn things about the county and about how to do my job, but I also meet people and uh, visit areas that uh, were not familiar to me before I became County Commissioner. And one of those areas is a group called Ormaco, and today we're going to learn uh, about their organization, what they provide the county, and some of the things that they have planned. With me today, I have uh, Thomas Siegel and Teresa Laffey, and I just want to thank the two of you, first of all, for joining me today, taking time out of your day to uh, spend some time with us here. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thomas, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you just uh, talk about Omaco, first of all, what it stands for, and uh, how you started it, and uh, uh, some of the things that, uh, that you provide for the county. So Omaco stands for Ohio Regional Music, Arts, and Cultural Outreach. I know it's quite a mouthful. Mm -hmm but it encompasses what we do. Um, and I started Ormaco a little over two years ago now. Okay. Um, came back to the area, had sort of a global career, came back to my roots in Medina County, and I saw that there was a gap of music, arts, and culture, specifically making music, arts, and culture accessible to minority, disadvantaged, and rural populations. So I came up with this idea and launched or Mako um, in October of 2011, and uh, we've been doing some amazing outreach programs since. Um, what we've been doing is we've been going into the schools. We had an amazing program um, just in October, and we collaborated with Teresa in the library where the Ohio Arts Council brought a Japanese drumming ensemble to the community. So that was amazing. We did an outreach program in Black River. We mm -hmm. touched about 1,000 kids there. Um, we did a program at the library and also in the Northwest School District as well. Now, Tom, when you say a program, what do you mean a program? To give me some specifics, or what are some of the things that you do? Essentially, with the music outreach programs, we go in, and in this instance, it was a Japanese drumming ensemble. So we taught the children about the specific Japanese drumming, the culture, the Japanese mm -hmm. culture, and really introduced the children to um, um, uh, music that they've never experienced before. So that's one example of what we've done. Uh, we also started something called the World Tour of Music, which is, uh, again, making concerts accessible to the community um, and bringing in ensemble, professional ensembles at an affordable price. In fact, we have coming up in uh, February the University of Akron Steel Drum Band. Mm. And we brought them Those here before. Those are good. And it's wonderful. We do our concerts uh, at the Broadway Street Hall Auditorium uh, in the County Administration Building. And uh, so that's February 2nd. Then we have another concert coming up in April, uh, April 6th, which is Noel Quintana and the Latin Crew, which will be a Latino jazz based mm -hmm. concert as well. Excellent. Now, Teresa, you work at the library. Yes. And I'm sure most folks out there, when they hear library, they think books, they probably think videos. But as we've been talking before the show here, there's obviously a, a connection between uh, the arts and the culture and things that Thomas is talking about and the, the library. And, and you, you all have linked together to provide some pretty neat uh, opportunities. Why don't you talk a little bit about that link and what those opportunities are? Oh, yes, we have linked together. Thomas and I first got started um, with Arts Council together, and then he created his group. Uh, me with the library, um, we do, we are about books. That's our main focus to begin with in materials, but we also um, pride ourselves as having community spaces for everybody's needs. And in each one of our branches, we have areas where people can come and have meetings and also provide some programming. And programming is very important, especially cultural programs, because it fits part of our mission where we want to ed be part of education, recreation, and inform people about different cultures. So when Thomas came to me about the on ensemble, um, the Japanese drumming, we thought it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we have a meeting room that we could provide the space for the workshop. When I talked about it, I didn't know if it was going to be a children's program, teens, or adult program, and we decided it would all programming needs, mm -hmm. all age levels, and it was wonderful. It That's was, neat. it was, we had about 50 some people where they could view, get a taste of what the concert would be like for the following night, and 
some hands-on drumming and drum set we haven't had in the area. The large Tyco drums, weren't they? Yes. From Tyco. Um, so it was great. So That's we neat. are always looking to be able to host something like this. Now you mentioned, uh, you said you were on the Arts Council together. Talk yes. a little bit about that. Uh, Medina County Arts Council is an organization that is um, sort of our conduit with the state Ohio Arts Council. Okay. We have a, we're an umbrella organization that um, we raise money to, and we give it to grants to any kind of art, well, not to any, but different arts organizations in um, Medina County can come in and get grant money from us to help provide them for their art programs. Excellent. And that's just a nonprofit organization you collect, they just take donations in order to provide those things? Right. We take do donations, but uh, mainly it's our memberships and it's corporate memberships or individual memberships. Fantastic. And that money, and we have a showcase fundraiser, and we have little f fundraisers here and there to raise money, but we provide that for all the different kinds of arts organizations, whether it's a dance troupe or an art program. Mm -hmm. So. Now, Thomas, earlier you were talking about the Ohio Arts Council selected the Medina area or the Medina Arts Council for some relatively special uh, yes. recognition and some opportunities. Talk so, a little bit about yeah, those. Yeah, so what's, what was very exciting, we as a young organization um, applied to the Ohio Arts Council for a grant um, last year. And the only thing we were eligible to apply for at that time was board capacity building. So I submitted the application and received a call one day from the administrator of the Ohio Arts Council. He says, I'm just blown away with what you've achieved in such a short amount of time with your outreach. We would love to bring this Japanese drumming ensemble to your community. So we were, in October, selected one of five communities in the entire state for this wow. program. Wow. And that was the, the Japanese drumming in collaboration with the library. This drumming group came from California. Okay. Right, so we, right. would, we would not have known about them at all, but they, they passed through the Ohio Arts Council. Right. Fantastic. One, one of the top, one of the top Tyco drumming ensembles in the world, mm -hmm. and we had them right here in our yeah, own backyard. Neat. So as a result of that, what happened was um, our eyes were on the radar screen of another organization called Arts Midwest, based out of Minneapolis. So this gentleman from Arts Midwest flew out, he came to our September concert. We did a concert uh, with an artist called Pavlo, who came in from Canada, a Mediterranean guitarist, and we actually collaborated with Feeding Medina County for that. Mm -hmm. And we gave, that. you know, yeah. we were very proud. In fact, we just cut a check for um, close to $1,400, which we gave to the adult food bank program. So that was wonderful. So this gentleman flew out, he said, what a great community, what a great concert, what a great facility at the library. And we have been selected for a two-year grant program, which will start next October, um, which is one of nine communities in the entire Midwest. That's neat. So that's our region starting next October. And the first ensemble will be an Israeli ensemble from October 6th to the 12th and we have the whole week to do wonderful outreach programs, which will then culminate in a concert, a world tour of music concert. Now, are they, will they be performing at different locations in the county during that time or around the county? Where will they be performing? Well, we're just, in fact, Teresa and I were just, just sort of it. working it out earlier. <clears throat> um, and yes, yeah, so we, we'll do, uh, again, we'll go rural outreach, um, Black River, some workshops at Black River. We want, we want to go to the Buckeye School each time that they come. We want to make sure that we have a program at the Buckeye Library because they, um, we get teens from the Buckeye School District um, that come over to us, 40 to 70 teens daily um, because there, aren't, there isn't busing for the high school. So they come to us and we're trying to provide programs with them. This is a teen population. So mm -hmm. uh, again, Arts Midwest, when he heard teens out in the rural part, yep. not in Buckeye, that this would be a good outreach for, for us to do. So each time they come, we will certainly have a program in Buckeye for the teens. And it will be an after-school program, and the workshop itself will probably be a demonstration of what the, the ensembles do and then some hands-on. So the goal really is to have as much impact throughout the entire county as possible during these one-week residencies. 
So the first one will be next fall with the Israeli. Then we have a Canadian ensemble coming mm -hmm. in fall of, um, yes, spring. no, spring, I'm sorry. Spring, spring of uh, 14. Excellent. And then fall of 14, we'll either have a Brazilian or a Chinese. And, and then the following spring, one of those groups as well. And this is all through that Midwest grant. It's a $100,000 investment from Arts Midwest into our community. That is absolutely fantastic. And, uh, you know, and I want you to talk a little bit more about the schools, but I want to ask a, a question before that. Uh, you know, as I started to learn about your organization, and even when we started here, uh, absolutely amazed at how much you've accomplished in such a short period of time. I mean, the momentum that things have with Ormaco here in Medina County seem to, you know, you would attribute to an organization that's been around a whole lot more and has kind of, you know, had backing and is kind of moving forward and, 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 and done a whole lot more in, in, a, in a period of time that would be longer than the two years that you've really been moving. The, the desire or the push to have that kind of outreach, like you talked about in your mission statement, to that rural area, you know, I've got some of my family that is involved in arts and dancing and music and stuff, and they all live in New York and California. And you, you know, you think of the big city in Los Angeles and those sort of things. What drove you to have this mission of I want to provide these arts and culture opportunities to rural areas? I think part of it is uh, I grew up in Homerville, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I grew up on a beautiful on country a, on, a, on a cattle farm in, 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 in Homerville, and my parents always sort of inculcated the best of all worlds to us. So we worked hard on the farm. We were out there throwing down bales of hay and mowing pasture and, 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 and getting up and doing our chores in the morning and after school. But they also exposed us to you know music, arts, and culture. They took us to Oberlin for piano lessons and uh, ballet lessons for my sisters. And, and uh, you know, so we, were, we, we just had this great balance of life on the farm and, and, Very and exposure, well -rounded. exposure to cultural yeah. things as yeah. well. Um, so that, for me, the rural component of Ormaco is very important. But we also, again, the mission is to make music, arts, and culture accessible to all with the focus on minority, disadvantaged, and rural. Mm -hmm. So an example, we did a few tremendous outreach programs this summer at the Union Square development with Let's Make a Difference, Michelle Powell's program. We yes. did three art classes for those mm -hmm. children. Had a tremendous impact. And then Mayor Hanwell came in and gave those children certificates of achievement. Pay some attention to those children who are otherwise overlooked. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. Um, we did free guitar lessons. We did a program at um, Garfield School in October where we brought the musical theater project out of Cleveland to um, do the story of Cinderella with those children and help boost their self-esteem through music. And, and, and that was an amazing program as well. So we're trying to do all kinds of outreach programs, not just with music, but with arts and with culture and not just with the schools and the children, but we're also touching the lives of seniors. Mm -hmm. We do, um, we work with Cindy Schneider and the Hands Foundation, Excellent. and we reach out to their community. And a lot of those people are going on our party buses, which are absolutely <laughs> tremendous. I can attest to that. <laughs> Teresa's been on a couple of them. And what we'll do, we'll do things like we'll go up to Playhouse Square and we'll get on the party bus at Bueller's River Sticks and we'll have a wine, wine and we'll have a beautiful lunch. We do a trivia quiz. We go up, we see the show. People don't have to worry about getting in the car and driving down to Playhouse Square. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks ago, we took a group, 55 people, to the Toledo Museum of Art to see the Manet exhibit, which is the only stop in the U.S. before it goes to the Royal Academy wow. of Arts. Wow. And we had people, many seats, we had people of all age groups on that. But what was neat, we drew people from Ashland, Worcester, Medina, all over Medina mm -hmm. County, Cleveland, Akron. So people are now starting with what we're doing coming from all regions. Jazz Under the Stars, another fantastic program with the generous support of the Medina County Community Fund bringing four top-notch professional jazz groups to the square yep. for free jazz concerts. And I know you've been at a couple absolutely, of them. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, you know, I'll put my commissioner hat on here for a second. Uh, you, you realize that that has an impact in the community just because of the value of the arts that it brings to the community. Mm -hmm. But it also has an economic impact to the community. You bring people from outside and they see, you know, what Medina County has to offer. They see the, the, the charm of, of Medina, uh, of the square there. And those things all impact the reputation 
of Medina County, and it really has, you know, maybe not a visible or, or a direct impact, but a very, very positive indirect impact on a lot of other areas just by bringing that into the community. Uh, you, you mentioned the schools, and I want to get back to the schools. You talked a little bit about uh, uh, kind of bringing the arts and cultures into the schools. Talk a little bit more about it. I know you, you mentioned Buckeye School. What other schools have you worked with, or what other schools are you planning uh, to do some things with here in the future? Oh, we work with all the schools as often as, as we can. Um, I know that separately we're working with um, the county school uh, superintendent and that to provide some literary events going on. We're going to have um, Jordan Sonnenblick, who's an author for teens, come in, in in May. So we're working with a superintendent there trying to see how we can plan a program for all the students from all the schools from around the county to come to one session with him. So we mm -hmm. have that to work out. But, um, I know that in Medina, the children's super, supervisor, Daphne, she's working closely with the principal of Garfield School because we have a lot of kids from Garfield coming into the school. They sort of touch, touch base. They come in, stop on, see what's going on mm -hmm. in Medina before they go home. So um, she's working closely with us with hopes that we'll have author visits. So collabor collaboration is very important right. nowadays. We need the partnering. And we can't do some of this stuff alone. We can't do what Thomas is doing. We could not go out and bring these people into our libraries. But fortunately, working together with Ormaco, that we can. We can provide the space and have these groups come into our facilities and help to fulfill our mission and our desire to be community places mm -hmm. where people will gather. Now, Ormaco is a nonprofit. We are a nonprofit. We're a 5013C organization, and we are all volunteers. So okay. we have a board of directors, and we all have our day jobs. So for us, it's really a passion. Mm -hmm. And we would love for more people to get involved. We'd love to have volunteers. If anybody has a fantastic idea for an outreach program in their community, come to us. But we, again, we need you to sort of take the ball and roll with it, but we can do it under the Ormaco umbrella. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, volunteers, and we're looking for more board members and more participation. We would love to fill up the auditoriums when we do the World Tour Music. We would love that square of Medina to be packed out when we do Jazz Under the Stars. And we really want Ormaco to become a household name for people mm -hmm. in Medina, say Ormaco, and be an integral part, because the more people who are involved, the more outreach programs that we can provide. Now, now who are your volunteers? Are they, are they mostly adults who are involved in, in music and culture things? Are they high school kids? Who are, who are most well, of your volunteers? We have um, a variety. I mean, we have um, professionals from the community who are on our board. Um, we have uh, uh, the jobs organization came with some high school uh, students this summer and helped out with the Jazz Under the Stars. Um, and we've got individuals, young people, people of all age groups, so there's no restriction or limit. Well, who helped you with um, Let's Make a Difference program? Who were the, with the art program? So with the, um, yeah, so with the um, art program at Let's Make a Difference, Shar Klimko, um, okay. one of our board members who has uh, danced to Elegant Studio in town, uh, orchestrated that, and then she brought together um, some former art teachers, Kathy Krauss, um, mm -hmm. She brought uh, Sarah, um, Sarah Jane Ingram was one of the art teachers as well. And then She's we done a big picture book. Sarah Jane has done a picture book. And Char has been an artist herself, done wonderful paperwork. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had just wonderful people from the community who came in and put together that program and offered these. And also Cornerstone Wellness provided food parcels for those children because sadly those children were hungry. I mean, you had one little girl that came to art classes barefoot and in her nightgown. Mm -hmm. And you knew that that child was hungry. Um, so it was just the, the impact that that had with the children was amazing. I mean, there was one little boy, the very first session we had chalk for the children and they were doing chalk drawings. And the little boy took the chalk and started ripping up the chalk and then he took it and he was angrily scribbling on his paper. Over the three weeks, he transformed. I mean, at the first session, you would go up to him, he would cower back. So obviously, signs of abuse or something in the house are very sad. At the very end, when Mayor Hanwell handed him that certificate of achievement, 
He was beaming. He was so happy. And then he started crying when he found out that that was the last art mm -hmm. session. So if we could continue to perpetuate these lessons and classes and outreach, that's what we would love to do if we could do it on a more frequent basis. But it's difficult as volunteers. I mean, if I didn't have to earn a living, yeah. you know, I would love to throw my day job away and just do this outreach because when you see a little child react like that, it's amazing. We also did an outreach program at Lodi Hospital. We did a, we did a wellness program and those sick patients wheeled out of their rooms with their IV tubes and sick as can be and their families and we provided 45 minutes of soothing music to them. They loved it and Lodi Hospital said, when are you coming back for another wellness concert? Yeah. I, you know, just the, the, the outreach, you mentioned Feeding Madonna County. I might not even ask you a little bit more to, to talk about that. But, you know, years ago, and I, for, for a number of years, our church would just do a simple go sing Christmas carols in a nursing home mm -hmm. uh, on Christmas Eve. And you would go in, and, and mostly they were elderly, and you'd usually bring your kids, and you'd have a little stuffed animal, and you'd give the, the, the folks. And just the, the, uh, the reaction... And, and just the amazement that you see in doing these tiny, that you think is something insignificant. See, that's right, that's simple, but it's powerful. Yeah, absolutely right, you're absolutely, and, and, and just the, the reaction, there's no, um, you can't put a value on that. You can't put any sort of, this is just as good as that, because there's nothing like it. There's no other thing like it when you see the, and you know, the way you describe the kid uh, uh, getting a certificate there, I'm sure it was the same Well, thing. even like this summer, you know, last summer with the Jazz Under the Stars, you know, Elmcroft Senior Living brought a van load of seniors who were cooped up in that senior home and they went right there in the square and in their wheelchairs and, and we helped them, we had volunteers who helped wheel them out mm -hmm. and they had such pleasure listening to that music for two mm -hmm. hours on a, on a summer, beautiful summer evening. The impact that it had. Uh, Thomas, we talked a little bit earlier, and you know, again, at my upbringing, there was a, you know, was a lot of outdoors and there was a lot of sports, and there wasn't a lot of the things that we've discussed here today. And, I, and, and I'm learning more of these, uh, not only as a commissioner, but my wife's family was a whole lot more into dance and theater and music and, and just a, 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 almost an amazing dichotomy from, from how my family was growing up. And now I see in, um, in my daughter's especially the interest in music and they almost can pick up anything and you know sing and play and my daughter uh, in high school is in a talent show coming up here uh, but when you when you have when you're trying to reach somebody like me because you know in, in years past to get me to a jazz underneath the stars I would not have seen the value in it where now that I've been to it not only do I see the value but I even learn more about your organization I see the outreach when you're trying to reach somebody like me to say hey give this a try you know, you might be interested in this. This is different than you, you know, think it is. How do you do that? How do I do that? How does anybody do that? I, I can, I'll start with you, Teresa. You got any ideas? Well, somehow convince you to come for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to convince people, try it, you know, be open enough to try something. And if you come in for the first time and see, you might say, this is wonderful, it's not for me, but I know who it is for. Mm -hmm. And then now you have a supporter on a different level. You either like it, or and you're gonna talk about it and come back, or you're gonna tell other people about it and you come back mm -hmm. with it. I think, and I think Medina County itself, this is a little off from that, but Medina County itself, we provide a lot of art opportunities. Um, and if you look at the schools, you were talking about your girls and that's what made me think about it. I, the, the, the arts programs in the schools, the music programs, the, the concert programs, the band concerts, they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we, from all, from Cloverleaf to Medina to Brunswick, we have wonderful opportunities there. And I think in Medina County, we yeah. can be proud of that. Yeah. I think it's a challenge. You're absolutely right. People in today's age are so wrapped up in, I mean, there's so many things that are happening and, and, and we've lost sight of sort of family time together mm -hmm. as well. And so what we do, I mean, all of these things that we do are accessible. Bring your family to a concert, yeah. you know? It's, it's you know, a free jazz concert. If you go out to a restaurant and to a movie or whatever, compare the cost of coming to a free jazz under the stars, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and bring your family, bring a picnic, bond and have family time together and bring your friends. And so what's happening is, again, you know, 
people are still not quite sure what we are, what we're about, but it's starting to catch on. And I think as Teresa said, word of mouth, come to an event, see what we're doing, spread the good word. And, um, you know, we just have great stuff happening. The way you describe it there too, you know, what am I, if you can call it a strength, you call it a weakness. I don't relax. You know, I go from one job to another. I'm constantly doing things. There's always things to do around the house. And the night that my wife and I went up to, to, to jazz under, uh, under the stars, we, you know, we brought our lawn chairs, we sat down, we went to Lemonberry, you know, we spent five, four or five bucks on a big bowl of ice cream that probably wasn't good for me. But we sat there and we listened to the concert and I relaxed. And, and I don't do that very often. And there's not a whole lot of things that can really make me relax. Uh, but sitting there, it was a beautiful evening and the music was fantastic and just the atmosphere, uh, it was a, just a, a great opportunity. Uh, getting close to the end here, Ormaco, tell people how they can get uh, in touch with Ormaco, the website, maybe even spell it for them. So right, we make so sure. Ormaco, again, is Ohio Regional Music Arts and Cultural Outreach. And the phone number is 330-722-2541. The website is www.ormaco.org. And who should be contacted? Who should be going to the website? Well, everybody can go to the website. So mm -hmm. people who are interested in um, our upcoming events. So again, upcoming events, University of Akron Steel Drum Band in February, Neil, uh, Noel Katana and the Latin Crew. We've got a party bus on March 17th going up to Playhouse Square to see Sister Act. And then next summer we'll have the jazz. Um, so anybody who's interested in those events, anybody who wants us to maybe spearhead a, an outreach program, volunteers, people might want to be involved in the board, love to hear from you. Fantastic. And I was at the website earlier today, very, very user friendly. You have the, uh, the opportunities on there that are free, concerts and jazz under the stars things. You also have the stuff that uh, the, there's a cost associated with it. Uh, can they buy tickets on, on the website? You can buy tickets online or you can call me or with the World Tour of Music, those tickets are available one month in advance at all Medina County Bueller's stores. All right. Well, again, absolutely amazed uh, at how much momentum uh, and how much success you've had in just a very, very short period of time. And really, uh, as the more I learn the impact that it has in Medina County, uh, it really just is, is, is an important thing for our county and amazing what you've achieved in such a short period of time. Uh, Teresa and Thomas, thank you very, very much for your for time today. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. And I'd like to thank you for joining uh, me today here in Medina County. Uh, until next month, thank you. This is Adam Frederick, and have a good day. In a world full of what ifs, what if you could ensure that cable companies across the country continue to provide the local channels and support to you and your community without any new fees or taxes? Well, now you can. Join us in support of the CAP Act. When Congress passes the CAP Act, we'll have ensured the continued support of the 5,000 public education and government channels across the U.S. who broadcast more than one million hours of new locally produced programs each year by people just like me and by people just like you. What if you go to the Act Now section at acommunitytv.org and call your Congress member to pass the CAP Act today? Gaining weight was easy. All I had to do was sit down and eat. Losing weight's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step, every choice, every day. Very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES.